Good morning. Happy Saturday, everyone. Uh, we thank God this morning for this new day. Uh, we praise his name because he is worthy. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning to declare that you are our God. And we are witnesses to the fact that you are God you work in our lives we understand uh, the salvation that was paid for by your son you purchased our freedom from sin and death and we thank you and honor you for that and to be your children obedient to your word causes us to desire to study what you would have us do so that we might understand you better be closer to you and to follow your Holy Spirit that lives in us thank you for all things Father in Jesus name Amen Amen so this morning we're going to finish up the week's lesson the daily devotional 120 disciples the book of Acts chapter 1 verses 12 through 17 and it reads then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olive which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey and when they were come in they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphas and Simon Zealots and Judas the brother of James. Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about a hundred and twenty men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. 120 disciples. Original 12 plus others <clears throat> who heard and believed and not only believed they acted because there were 500 people who witnessed his uh, resurrection uh, saw him alive after the, crucif the crucifixion but only 120 obeyed what he said he spoke to this 500 and told them to wait on the Holy Spirit, but only 120 of them waited. So God can speak to you, and you can not obey him. Be careful about that. Okay, we're finishing up this week's lesson with section 3C, Effective Prayer. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 32. And we'll start reading in Acts 4, the 29. And it says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken 
where they had assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the commentary says, When the Sanhedrin released the apostles, they turned immediately to the church and gave a full report of the things that had befallen them. In verse 23, the believers heard them with understanding and empathy. The believers realized how serious the situation was and joined together in prayer, seeking divine intervention. Verse 24, the prayer was intelligent, unified, and effective. They prayed to God the Father, recognizing Him as Sovereign and referring to Him as Lord. The word Lord denoted absolute ownership and uncontrolled power. His ownership stems from both His creative and His redemptive work. Then the thoughts of the prayers in verse 25 and 26 turn to the second chapter of Psalms. Tertullian gave an interesting interpretation to this passage. And I quote, In the person of Pilate, the heathen rages, and in the person of Israel, the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth inherit, and the rulers in Annas and Sophias were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. The death of Jesus came at the hands of men who acted with free wills and who were therefore morally accountable. At the same time, they did only what God had determined before to be done. Verse 28, this paradox of human freedom and divine sovereignty is one of the great mysteries of life. The believers responded to the threats of the Sanhedrin by praying for greater boldness to speak the truth. Verse 29, they recognized the need for personal courage so they might be true to their calling. The disciples also prayed for the Lord's seal of public approval on their ministry. They prayed for the Lord to continue healing the sick and performing miraculous signs and wonders. Verse 30. God gave the believers an immediate assurance of his presence. In verse 31. The place where they were assembled trembled like it had been shaken by an earthquake. They had prayed for boldness and miraculous signs, and the Lord filled them afresh with the Spirit that they might have both. They went forth to proclaim the gospel with renewed confidence. The unchangeable God was with them. Rather than discouraging and dividing the believers, the persecution from the Sanhedrin brought them closer together. All the believers were united in heart and mind. <clears throat> That's from verse 32. Okay, conclusion to this week's lesson, The Growing Church. <coughs> it's titled, Single-Hearted Devotion. It says the first Christian community was known for its single-hearted devotion and was highly regarded by all the people. The common meals they had in their homes were joyful occasions and expressed their love for one another. Wholly dedicated to Christ, they continued to praise God and to worship in the temple. The fellowship continued to grow. The Lord kept on adding to their number 
those who were being saved. The lifestyle of those believers was appropriate to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of love and fellowship. Amen. This, this early church was composed or comprised of believers, uh, many who were personal witnesses to the resurrected Christ. And so, unfortunately, their commitment and the acts that they performed were from an experience of physically seeing Christ. And so, we can't operate on in that realm because we haven't seen him. We have faith, though. And our faith is built up as we trust God daily for all our needs. And we must look and see that he is working in our lives so that we can build our faith, our trust in him. This is a very important part of your relationship with God, that you recognize that he's working in your life that you declare the works of God in your life, give testimony to what God is doing in your life so that you might build your faith and honor him properly. Because if not, you will just see God as another individual, another thing. He's not a thing. He's a creator. He's the creator and lover of your soul. And so you must relate to him as such. That is the respect God deserves. And that is the proper respect that God deserves. So give him what he deserves. Honor his name. Trust in him. And be filled his spirit so that you might do his will thank you for your time I pray that tomorrow uh, all the fathers enjoy Father's Day um, enjoy your families see you for dads honor them and be blessed above all things because God loves you and cares for you thank you Emma.